her makeup empire Kylie Cosmetics with just one product a lip kit later she expanded her business and now is a successful billionaire mogul and it won't be wrong to say that social media had a huge role in building her multi million dollar company just like Kylie Jenner's brand several other brands started and grew on social media and today we are going to see how these brands left their footprint in the virtual world and became extremely popular among netizens. First, let's talk about Kylie Cosmetics. It all started with Kylie getting trolled for overlining her lips and denying having lip fillers in 2015. She used the bad press to launch her brand 6 months later. Kylie Cosmetics' first launch had $29 lip kits, which sold out completely in under a minute. And she had just promoted the brand on her social media accounts. Since its 2015 debut, Kylie Cosmetics has managed to stay afloat in an oversaturated market. This is due in part to Jenner's own ability to stay relevant in pop culture and the genuine quality of her products. Several other social first brands are currently making strides by experimenting with content, corporate social responsibility, delivery models, customer service and good old fashion PR. Starting a new business is always a gamble, but there are brands approaching the seemingly monumental task by flipping the traditional business model on its head. Glossier is another such brand. It is the brainchild of Emily Weiss who launched her influential beauty blog Into the Gloss in 2010. Weiss made an impact with creative content that included makeup reviews and went into the closets of celebs such as Selena Gomez. Weiss felt like there was a gap in the beauty market and she sought to fill that hole by launching Glossier on Instagram in 2014 with only 4 SKUs. They operate solely on social channels. Now coming to fashion from beauty brands, Cotia Dele was first launched by Alain Megan in 2018. After selling vintage clothing for 15 years, Alia saw a missing link between the vintage market and current taste. To fill the gap, she decided to design an in-house line, producing pieces in California with a vintage aesthetic that she sells via the brand's Instagram feed as well as via its website and storefront in LA. What aided brands like Cotia Dele and Glossier is that Megan had a clear aesthetic and a sizable Instagram following interested in her point of view than others in the industry. Without having intended to, she built a fan base and community, primed to buy new clothing with vintage appeal. Social media enabled her to veer from one-of-a-kind purchases to a viable mass-market business strategy, what you might call transforming from show-and-tell to show-and-sell. Other than Cotia Dele, Girlfriend Collective is another fashion brand that launched and grew on social media. In 2016, the brand started selling clothes online. It launched with the aim to fill a gap in the direct-to-consumer active wear space. Based in Seattle, the founders, Kuang and Ellie Din, felt that they could craft a brand that from the start was transparent and aligned with their values. And what are those values? Environmentalism, fair labour practices and a clean design aesthetic for a few well-made garments. Manufactured from recycled water bottles and fishing nets, the brand designs and makes leggings, sports bras and t-shirts. The thing these brands have in common is that they offered an alternative approach, a different point of view than others in the industry at the time. Think of social media as a mirror of reality. Assume your audience conducts their entire life on social platforms. Social media isn't just a place to pass time. Social first businesses, they know their audience. And social media use has woven itself into our lives. You can use these tools to better understand your audience and keep up on trends in the community. Take it a step further by finding influencers to amplify your story. It's easier to plan what to offer when you absolutely know there's a ready buyer for it. <laughs> 